Dang Dang Hunter. No, it's wrong. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. Hey everybody, this is Mr. Eep here, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite and lovable characters in Danganronpa. You already know the kings and queens of the Ahoge hairstyle that we've all come to love, the protagonists. More specifically, in today's video, we're going to be analyzing each protagonist from each of the mainline Danganronpa games, breaking each character down to determine who would fit the title as the best protagonist in all of the Danganronpa games. Keep in mind that the majority of what I will be talking about today is basically just all my opinion on who I think would be the best protagonist, and I'd love to hear. What do you guys think? Who do you think is the best Danganronpa protagonist? I would love to know. Leave it in the comments below. Alright, so here's what's gonna go down. To determine who is the best protagonist, we're gonna be breaking down each of these characters' personalities into the following categories. First of all, we're going to talk about their personality. We're going to discuss how they act throughout the game, their character development and how much they change throughout the game, and you know, just their overall personality and how they act and treat others too. Next up, we'll be talking about some pros of the character, you know, some things that the protagonist does really well, and some things that make that protagonist shine and unique. Then we'll be talking about some negatives about the character, you know, some things that they could work on or some things that could be better about them that other protags are better at. And finally, I'll just do a real quick little summary of the character. Our fine line of protagonists consists of the following. We have the wholesome, optimistic, hope egg himself, Makoto Naegi, my main man! The overly cautious, yet smart and reliable, Hajime Hinata. The king of orange juice. The kind-hearted, approachable, and adorable Kaede Akamatsu, who is absolutely terrifying as a baby. And of course, you cannot forget everybody's favorite My Chemical Romance fan, Shuichi Saihara. Alright, enough chit-chat. Let's get this show on the road. Hope never dies. Not if we refuse to let it. However scared you are, you gotta push forward. Always. This is Makoto Naegi. Makoto Naegi is a member of the 78th class of Hope's Peak and features as the protagonist of Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. He is proclaimed as the ultimate lucky student after getting into Hope's Peak through winning a lottery that selects ordinary students such as himself. Makoto Naegi describes himself to be perfectly average, having no distinguishing features that make him unique whatsoever. Because of this, it makes him feel extremely insecure about himself when he's around the ultimate students, with the thought that he isn't good enough to be around them. Overall, however, Makoto is a very kind and supportive member of the students, who while can be quite naive and clueless at times, is still able to crack the cases and catch the black in successfully with his good old wifey Kirigiri. Okay, now let's talk about some pros of Makoto. Well, for one, he evolves from being an awkward, naive, ubu cinnamon boy into the ultimate hope. He is able to take down Junko and rescue his classmates and get out of the school. He's able to overcome his insecurities and take leadership in the class trials, and confidently expose his classmates' lies. As the game progresses, he becomes more knowledgeable and is even able to rely on his talent as the ultimate lucky student to get himself out of some tight situations, like nearly being executed. Towards the end of the game, Makoto becomes the ultimate hope after he defeats Junko and heads into the outside world to become a member of the Future Foundation. He's also responsible for the Neo World program in Danganronpa 2, which, while can be seen as a negative thing because you know they were all forced into the killing game, he along with Byakuya and Kyoko are able to guide Hajime and his friends along to shut down the Neo World program. Alright, now let's talk about some negatives, and this was quite hard to think of because Makoto doesn't really have a lot 
lot of these. The only thing that really stood out to me as a weakness for Makoto is how naive he can be at times, and how in class trials he kind of relies on others, mainly Kirigiri, to develop on some points that he makes. Now another argument that I see being thrown around about Makoto is the fact that he, as a character and his personality, it's just a little bit too bland, and most people find him pretty boring. And I gotta say, I do agree he does have a very bland, boring personality, and he doesn't change too much throughout the series, but he is still a very important character who is responsible for a number of important things that happen in the series, but yes, he doesn't have the most outstanding personality. Hey, what the heck is going on? I is this a serious bug or something? I am not Izuru Kamakura. I am Hajime Hinata! This is Hajime Hinata. Oh boy, Hajime Hinata. Hajime Hinata is a member of class 77B at Hope's Peak and features as the protagonist of Goodbye Despair. However, unlike Makoto and being the ultimate lucky student, Hajime is unable to remember his talent for the majority of the game. Now there's a lot to cover about Hajime outside of the games as well, so we're just gonna be primarily focusing on him in the game and not so much on the anime because this video would end up being hours long and I would probably die halfway through making this video and I don't plan on doing that. Alright, so just like we did with Makoto, we're first going to be discussing Hajime's overall personality. Hajime starts out to be quite cynical, acting very cautious around others and questioning everything. He's very skeptical and paranoid, not having very much interest in wanting to socialize with the other students on the island. However, as the game progresses, he gradually becomes more friendly with the other students. Hajime thinks very logically and seriously and can seem quite cold at first, but he gradually opens up more throughout the game and socializes with his classmates more often. Hey you guys! Don't forget about me! Hey hey, wait for me! Let me join in the fun! Now as we all know, he becomes very close with Chiaki, and is able to move forward with a hopeful mindset because of that. Towards the end of the game where he learns the oh so horrible truth that he's a talentless reserve course student, and after undergoing, you know, a midlife crisis, That's not me! It's not me! Shut up! Leave me alone! He still doesn't give up, and he is determined to shut down and end the killing game and escape with his friends. So let's talk about some pros of Hajime's character. Well for one, we gotta address the elephant in the room, okay? Hajime is probably the most important character in the whole entire Danganronpa universe. Allow me to explain. Just like Mikoto, Hajime is one of the most important characters in the series. He starts off not knowing his talent, then realizing he doesn't have a talent, then realizing he was a reserve course student, and then learning the truth that he participated in the Izuru Kamakura project. And yeah, that, that was quite a big part of the series. Another pro about Hajime is the fact that he is able to ace class trials. Because of Hajime's logical mindset, he is an ace at the class trials. He is able to guide his classmates to the truth with a calm and logical mindset. He doesn't show too much emotion in the class trials, and he takes a very serious approach to the trials. He is able to think clearly and for himself and guides his classmates to the truth without being afraid to shut down their arguments. Allow me to cut through those words! Onto the third and final pro of Hajime, his confidence. A common theme that you will see amongst protagonists like Makoto and Shuichi is that they seriously lack confidence in what they are saying sometimes, or sometimes they even lack confidence in themselves. I'm looking at you, emo boy. Hajime seems to be the polar opposite of these two. He means what he says, and he has lots of confidence in himself and what he's saying. This is a key reason why most of the Danganronpa fandom prefer Hajime over the other protagonists. Because he isn't as... Uh, how can I say this nicely? He isn't as much of a pushover. So now we're gonna quickly touch on Hajime's negative aspects. What are some things that Hajime hasn't done as well as the other protagonists? Well, I'll tell you! He didn't pay for that sticker. He still hasn't paid Monokuma back the one million dollars for this beautiful sticker. So to briefly summarize, Hajime Hinata plays an extremely important role in the Danganronpa universe. He's an all-round strong and enjoyable protagonist who has many strong suits and things going for him. He is definitely an improvement over Makoto, according to most of the Danganronpa fandom, and in my eyes, yeah, he's a pretty solid protagonist. 
I'm giving it to you, Shuichi. From now on, you're going to carry on my wish. You're going to protect everyone. This is Kaede Akamatsu. Kaede Akamatsu is a student of the Ultimate Academy for Gifted Juveniles and is the first protagonist of Danganronpa V3 Killing Harmony. And I say first protagonist because, unfortunately, Kaede is now... Well, Kaede did, huh? <laughs> Kaede Yakamatsu is a very kind-hearted and optimistic person. She is very caring towards her classmates and only wishes for the best for them right from the get-go right after Monokuma announces the killing game. Whilst her classmates fall into a state of panic, Kaede isn't afraid to quickly take leadership over her classmates and take action. After giving a wonderful heartfelt speech to her classmates and leaving them, well, speechless, she along with the rest of the class, all filled with hope, begin actively seeking a way out of the school. And it's all thanks to Kaede's wonderful and hopeful aura that she gives off, in a very confident way that the students are all filled with hope. So what are some of Kaede's strengths as a protagonist? Well for one, her overly optimistic and confident attitude is honestly a breath of fresh air. Right from the get-go we are introduced to Kaede as being a very sweet and kind-hearted young lady who just wants the best for her classmates. Oh yeah, my name is Kaede Akamatsu. I'm the ultimate pianist. Nice to meet you. I mean come on, isn't that just so cute. She gives her classmates the courage and drive to try and escape the school together. And this in turn results in her trying her hardest no matter what. She even gets the class to feel confident enough to try and complete the death road of despair. And even after numerous failed attempts, she still tries her hardest to get her class back on their feet to try again. Which doesn't end too well, but we'll touch on that a little later. Her confidence is such a breath of fresh air, because unlike Makoto, Kaede isn't as much of a pushover and responds appropriately to more headstrong characters like Kokichi, and although he tries to provoke her over and over, she does not give in and she stands up for herself. As well as this, her confident and kind-hearted nature is an essential part of Shuichi's character development. Kaede leaves a huge impact on Shuichi and gives him the confidence to believe in himself. She gives Shuichi a drive to continue pushing forward and to continue trying, which is just so cute. And this in turn results in Kaede entrusting her wish of allowing the class to escape the school to Shuichi after she unfortunately is caught to be the blackened. And this in turn results in Shuichi becoming stronger and growing into a stronger and more confident version of himself. Another one of Kaede's key strengths is the fact that she was the first female protagonist for a mainline Danganronpa game. And although it didn't last long, many fans really enjoyed finally seeing a female protagonist in a mainline game. And it's really disappointing to see that they didn't continue with this. It's pretty clear that Spike Chunsoft did a little trolling with this one. So what are some of the negative things that Kaede has done? Well, as I mentioned previously, the Death Road of Despair incident was a pretty big setback for Kaede. Despite having a confident and optimistic aura, Kaede at times can be a little bit too too confident and a little bit too optimistic. And the Death Road of Despair was a perfect example of that. Despite her classmates obviously struggling with the Death Road of Despair, she continued to put pressure on them and continued to keep pushing forward until they had seriously had enough. And another negative thing about Kaede would have to be the fact that, well, she died. It's a real shame that Spike Chunsoft didn't keep her around, as while I do absolutely love Shuichi and I do consider him to be one of my all-time favorite Danganronpa characters, I just really feel as if it would have been a huge breath of fresh air for Danganronpa fans if she continued to be the protagonist of V3. So to briefly summarize, Kaede was an amazing protagonist and while she didn't live very long, she filled her role very well and plays a very important part in the V3 storyline. I won't forgive this game that treats us like toys. And if this is what the world wants... Then I reject that world! I'll fight the world that inflicts suffering for entertainment! This 
is Shuichi Saihara. Shuichi Saihara is also a student of the Ultimate Academy for Gifted Juveniles and features as the second playable protagonist of Danganronpa V3. Shuichi is introduced to us at the very start of the game as being a very quiet, unconfident and just not a very social or outgoing person overall. Right from the get-go when he introduces himself to Kaede, this all becomes pretty clear as he immediately begins doubting himself and his talent right after he introduces himself to Kaede. And this is further highlighted when Kaede once again confronts Shuichi on his lack of confidence, with him explaining that a majority of his lack of confidence comes from him feeling that he doesn't really deserve the title as the ultimate detective. This sort of attitude with Shuichi continues throughout the majority of Chapter 1, with Kaede taking Shuichi under her wing and helping him become a more confident and better version of himself. And Shuichi's behaviour and attitude doesn't really undergo any significant changes right until the first class trial, where not only does reality hit him pretty hard, but Kaito's fist also hits him pretty hard. Did you hear what Kaede said? She said she believed in you, that she passed her wish onto you. But what the hell's wrong with you? You didn't say a damn thing to Monokuma. You call yourself a man? After Shuichi tumbles to the ground after receiving an incredible punch from Kaito, he is left in a state of shock after Kaito goes off at him for not resembling qualities of being a man. It takes Shuichi a while to process the passing of Kaede and to talk himself into entrusting Kaede's wish, but when he eventually starts to come right in the early stages of Chapter 2, it's a real shocker. Good morning. You finally got rid of that emo hat! Is this because Kaede died or whatever? No, I just felt like it was getting in the way is all. Yep, that's right, Shuichi takes off that stupid emo hat. This is basically Shuichi's way of telling everyone, yeah, I mean business now. I ain't letting Kaede's death go to waste, let's get the f out of here. From here on, things continue to get better for Shuichi. As the game progresses, Shuichi becomes more and more confident in himself, and is actually able to hold strong and relatively stable connections with his classmates. So what are some of Shuichi's strengths as a protagonist? Well for one, I personally found that watching Shuichi's character development was a really rewarding and satisfying process to watch. See, if we compare Shuichi to how he was at the start of the game, to how he is at the very end of the game, you can clearly see that he's been through some stuff. His entire personality almost does a complete 180, with him being way more confident in himself and what he says at the end of the game compared to him at the start of the game where he could barely mutter a single word. After the death of Kaede when Shuichi is at his all-time lowest, Shuichi realizes that he needs to get real, and with a clear goal in mind being to entrust Kaede's wish and escape the school, he progressively becomes more and more confident in himself and his talent. I mean sure, throughout the game until the final class trial, he doesn't really change drastically, but it's the little things that happen throughout the game that help him become more social and more confident. You know, things such as the removal of his hat, in early chapter 2, and the training sessions with Kaito and Maki, and even having to deal with Kokichi in class trials and just around the school in general, all of this shaped him up to be a better character. Secondly, his ultimate talent plays a really important part in his character and the story overall. One of the key aspects that sets Shuichi apart from all of the other protagonists is the fact that his ultimate talent is perfectly suited for his role in the game. As the ultimate detective, Shuichi is able to comfortably hone his skills with the help of his talent in the class trials. And thirdly, how could I possibly forget, Shuichi played a really big part in being responsible for the ending of the entirety of Danganronpa. Whoa, 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 hey, hey, hold on a second. But Mr. Eep, please tell me, how, how is that a good thing? I mean, being responsible for ending Danganronpa, my all-time favorite video game franchise, but why? Yes. I know. The way V3 handled their ending was, uh, it was questionable at best. However, looking at it from a different perspective with Shuichi as a character, this was a big responsibility for him, and it must have taken him a lot of guts and courage. Shuichi was responsible for putting the killing games and Danganronpa as a whole to an end. And while, sure, that definitely can be seen as a negative, in terms of Shuichi's character, that is a huge step for him. 
I mean, looking back at how he was at the start of the game, to the end of the game with him standing up for himself and ending the killing game? That's a pretty big development for him. So what are some of Shuichi's weaknesses as a protagonist? Well, an argument that I've personally seen circling around online a bunch is the fact that Shuichi himself is honestly a pretty boring character. And the reason for thinking this way is purely because if you were to put Makoto and Shuichi side by side, is there really much of a difference? I mean, sure, they look different and they have their subtle quirks here and there, but at the end of the day, their personality and motives are pretty similar to themselves. Comparing this to Hajime, who is an overall much more unique character, it just becomes even more clear. To put it briefly, Shuichi is basically a copy-paste of Makoto, and in Danganronpa fans' eyes, he didn't really deserve the title of being the protagonist of V3. So to briefly summarize, Shuichi Saihara was a fantastic protagonist. Although he may not be very well regarded as the greatest protagonist out of all of them, he still gets a lot of love, he fulfills his role very well, and I'd say he's an all-round pretty good protagonist. Now, it's the moment you've all been waiting for. Who is the best Danganronpa protagonist? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and everyone alike, the best protagonist in all of Danganronpa history. The fantastic and award-winning title goes to... Everyone get ready, oh my gosh, here he comes, oh my god, oh my god, it's gonna be... Your choice. Yep. That, that, that's right. At the end of the day, it comes down to, you know, what you look for in a good, well-rounded character. But, and this is a big but, if we actually look at it at a technical perspective, analyzing everything that I've talked about in this video, technically, okay, Technically, the best protagonist would most likely be Hajime. And the reason for this would be because Hajime plays the most significant role in the entire Danganronpa series. He is probably the most important character in the series. So technically, Hajime is the best protagonist, but at the end of the day, it really is your opinion, and it's up to you on who you think is the best protagonist. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're still watching the video thus far, I would just like to say a big thank you. Like, seriously, thank you so much. This video has been a long time coming, alright? I have literally spent about a year creating this video. You know, things happen in life that kind of had to put this uh, video production on hold. But here we are, the video is all done and up on YouTube, and I just want to say thank you so much for watching. Stick around for possibly more videos in the future, and I'd love to hear who is your favorite Danganronpa protagonist, and who do you think is the best protagonist? Make sure to tell me in the comments. I really want to hear what you you guys have to think. Maybe I missed some stuff. Go on, let me know. Yell at me, scream at me. Go, go now. In all seriousness though, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in the next video.